everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome to part three of my witchy bookshelf tour. Before we get started, I want to remind you all that the Black Lives Matter movement still needs support and still needs attention. So I'll link down below in the Dropbox some places that you can support the Black Lives Matter movement. So check those out. Today, I am going to share with you all all the books that I have on my witchy bookshelf that are correspondence books, guide books, encyclopedias, dictionaries, anything of that sort. If you haven't watched part one or part two of my witchy bookshelf tour, I will link those in the Dropbox and I'll link them above if you guys want to check those out. So since there's a lot of books, let's get started. <laughs> book I'm going to share with you all is The Fairy Bible, The Definitive Guide to the World of Fairies. So this book is so fun if you are interested in fairies. Even if you don't know anything about fairies yet, this is a great starter book for fairies. It's also a really beautiful book. There are so many beautiful illustrations in it and lots of beautiful stories, folklore, legends, and myths. It'll even give you different kinds of rituals to start working with fairies and to honor fairies teaches you how to work with fairies safely, since fairies are tricksters. Overall, just a really helpful book for anybody that is interested in fairies or fairy magic. The next book is Trees of North America, A Guide to Field Identification. Uh, I have this book because I am constantly wondering what the plants around me are, so I look them up in this book. Um, this book is really great because it has uh, lots of beautiful illustrations to help you identify different trees and different plants. The next two books kind of go together and they're books that I got when I was just starting out and I had no clue what books to buy and I just wanted to know the basics. Um, I just haven't thrown them out because I'm a hoarder. The first one is The Essential Crystal Handbook and the second one is The Essential Herbs Handbook. And both of these are very similar in that they are just exactly what they say they are, an image of the crystal so you can see what it looks like, the properties of the crystal, information about identifying the crystal and taking care of the crystal, ways to charge crystals and cleanse crystals, just really the basics of working with crystals. And then the herb one is exactly the same. It's just different herbs, where to find them, how to identify them, how to work with them, which herbs are safe and which are dangerous, the benefits of different herbs and even growing them. Uh, so this is really great if you're starting a herb garden you've never had one before and you want to know which ones you want to grow and which ones will thrive in an area that you live in. This book is really great for just learning about herbs and getting started. And I've also kept these simply because they are really good reference guides. If I get a crystal and I have no idea what it is, I can whip this book out and figure out which crystal it is. Um, and same with a herb. If I find a herb in nature and I don't know what it is, I can use this book to try to identify it. The next book is A Witch's Book of Answers. This book is, I think, really fun if you are just starting out and you have a lot of questions about Wicca and about witchcraft. Um, that's when I got this book when I was just starting out and I've kept it because it's honestly a really fun read and it's very unique. Very rarely do you find a book like this where it's really just question and answer. Um, and it's thick, so they go through a lot of different questions that you could possibly have. So I definitely recommend this book. It's not an essential, but it is definitely an interesting read and fun to have if you have questions. And it's also really good for hearing the opinions of other people and the beliefs of other people. It's just really good for expanding your horizons and opening your mind to new things. The next book is A Complete Dictionary of Dreams. This book I got when I started doing dream work. I've always been an astral projector. I sometimes accidentally astral project while I sleep. So I started a dream journal and started analyzing my dreams and working more closely with my dreams. And that's when I got this book. Uh, I love this book. It has almost any topic or thing that could come up in your dreams and you can look it up in here and then find out the meaning of it. Um, there have been a few things that have happened in dreams that aren't in this book that I was kind of disappointed about and I had to go on a deeper dive on the internet to figure out information about that specific thing. But most things are in this book. It really is just a list of alphabetically everything that could appear in your dream. It's just a really good reference guide if you are someone that works with dreams. The next book is very fun, one of my favorites. Uh, it's the Encyclopedia of Witchcraft and Demonology. As you can tell, this is an old book. Uh, I bought this at the last bookstore in downtown Los Angeles. 
Um, if you have not been there and you get the chance to go, definitely go. It's a magical place. The books are pretty cheap, especially the older books like this. I'm pretty sure I paid like less than $10 for this. You can find a lot of random weird books like this. This book is very fun because it kind of gives you an old school perspective of witchcraft and demono demonology. It talks about witchcraft in different countries, especially specifically in England and in different parts of Europe. It goes into the history of witchcraft and the witch trials. It talks about Salem specifically and what happened there. It's just a really beautiful book, really fun book, really interesting read. Even if you, while you're reading it, you're kind of like, this is crazy. I can't believe people believed this um, and behaved this way. Uh, it's still really fun to read, but mostly it is kind of like a guide from back in the day for like catching witches. So um, I think it's kind of fun to have. <laughs> The next two books are, again, some of my favorite witchy books that I have. Uh, the first one is Giants, Monsters, and Dragons, and it's like an encyclopedia of folklore, legend, and myth. So this book is so fun. If you are into monsters or creatures of any kind, pick this book up and you'll have a field day with it. Um, it, it really is just alphabetically every monster giant dragon anything having to do with that that has ever existed in any culture in any story all in one book so it is so much fun it's great if you need inspiration for a creative project i use them for that a lot if i'm trying to draw a monster or write a monster i will get this book out and it will inspire me so much um, it's also good for Wicca work and witchcraft work if you're looking for an entity or a creature to call on for a ritual or a spell. Then you can look through this book for an entity that has attributes that will work for your spell or your ritual, and you could call on that entity during that magical working. So it's also really good for your magical practice too. But it is so much fun. And the next book, like I said, goes with it. It's by the same person, and it is Spirits, Fairies, Leprechauns, and Goblins, an encyclopedia. So it's just as fun as the last one, just different kinds of creatures. So it really does just go through any culture, just lists all of them in alphabetical order. And it's so useful for creative projects, for spiritual workings. It's just so much fun. I love it. The next book is The Complete Book of Correspondences, a comprehensive and cross-reference resource for pagans and Wiccans. So this is a very thick book. Uh, you can think of this book as your replacement for Google forever. Um, if you ever have a question about anything in terms of correspondence, then this is the book for you. If you are into writing your own spells or writing your own rituals, then this book is an essential in my opinion. It has everything ever in this book from larger concepts like kindness and guilt and anger to crystals to herbs to animals to colors to days of the week to times of the year to times of the day it really just talks about everything and gives you the correspondence information for it it even talks about goddesses and gods and different entities so it's super helpful if you're writing your own spells and writing your own rituals the next book is birds of north america a guide to field identification so this book, I don't know if you'll be able to find it, but um, this book was my dad's actually. I not too long ago discovered my connection with birds and the spirit of birds. Um, so, and I started receiving spirit guide communication through birds. So I started getting into bird watching and took this book from my childhood home. So I'll use this book a lot if I see a bird in my backyard or have an interaction with a bird that I don't know what kind of bird it is. I will look it up in this book and it's really beautiful. It's pretty worn because it's old, but um, it's really just a beautiful older book. A slightly newer um, version of the last book is uh, Complete Birds of North America. And this is just a massive book about all the birds that live in North America. Um, again, bought this book when I discovered my love for birds. Um, I like to use this book to, again, identify birds, look up information about birds that I've had an interaction with or that I'm interested in. And then the last book is the Element Encyclopedia of 5,000 Spells, the ultimate reference book for the magical arts. This is a, a massive book of 
5,000 spells. So it's really good to have just kind of as a reference guide for different spells. If you're wanting to do some kind of spiritual working, but you're not really sure exactly what you should do, um, you could look up in this book healing spells, or there are spells for different elements and uh, protection spells, um, business spells, success spells, um, really just spells for anything and everything that you could ever think of, because there are 5,000 of them. So um, this book I use as partially a guide if I'm looking for a quick spell that I don't want to have to plan myself. I'll flip through this book and find one that is doable for me. And then I also sometimes will use this book as a jumping off point when I'm trying to plan my own spells and my own rituals. I'll use this book as inspiration. Really great if you're not into writing spells yet, but you want to have a bunch of reference spells to use in case you are trying to do spell work. So those are all the books that I have to share with you all today. I hope you guys enjoyed part three of my witchy bookshelf tour. There will be a part four or five, possibly six. And thank you so much to my subscribers. My channel has been steadily growing and that's because of all of you. So I appreciate your support so much. Thank you. If you guys have any requests, leave them in the comments down below. I do take requests. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe and let me know if you have any correspondence or encyclopedia type books that you love. And again, look in the Dropbox for Black Lives Matter links. It's important that we keep supporting and keep talking about this issue because it's nothing is going to get better if we don't work for it. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye. I'm not gonna apologize for hoarding books.